about five months. I turned to Google, but it didn't give me a clear diagnosis. So after waiting anxiously for another week, hoping that would miraculously show up, I decided to see a doctor. There, I learned that I had hypothalamic amenorrhea, in which the hypothalamus, the part of the brain responsible for homeostasis, receives so many stress signals that it begins telling the body it's an emergency, we need to focus on staying alive, and so reproduction, being non-essential, needs to go. At first, I couldn't believe it. Why did my hypothalamus think I was going to die? But after some reflection, I realized there were many stress signals. I was distance learning and living according to US time in China. I was running miles almost every day for training, and I was stressed about school and about COVID-19 and what I thought were impending college applications. But there was one more piece to the story. You see, when my doctor told me that in order to find my lost period, I needed to gain weight, I was first shocked, then confused by the internal opposition I felt. I was surprised when I realized I was weighing myself nearly every day. And I spent a large part of each day thinking about food. When I learned about eating disorders and disordered eating in middle school, I thought this would never, never be me. But there I was, in my doctor's words, on the edge of the cliff. So all this time, how did I not think that something was wrong? The concerning conclusion I reached was this, because it wasn't that different from what I've been doing my whole life. And perhaps what's more concerning is, it wasn't just me. Looking around, I realized that many of us look at ourselves and we find an identity in numbers, defining ourselves by our GPA, SAT score, number of extracurriculars, number of social media followers, the list goes on. And if you see yourself as defined by these metrics, of course you'll feel the need to run as fast as you can. Because if you stop or even slow down, how do you define yourself? What's your worth? Who are you? Who are you? That's the question I asked myself the most when I began my search for my period. Because I knew I needed to give up who I thought I was. Part of it was gaining weight. Part of it was replacing all my wants with walks. And part of it was sleeping nine to 10 hours and forcing myself for the first time to do the bare minimum. If none of those things were me, then who was I? The search for a meaningful and secure sense of self seems quite difficult. So let's hit pause on that and go to a slightly easier search, one that many of you might have embarked on in ninth grade biology. It's your first bio lab, and you are equipped with a microscope and a slide with a leaf, and you are tasked with finding, say, stomata, these cool pores where gas exchange. Now, you look into the eyepiece, and you see this. You might have started wondering if your teacher gave you the wrong slide, that maybe your slide just doesn't have stomata. But then, your teacher comes over, turns a little knob, and now, you see this. What did she do? She changed magnification levels. It's the exact same slide, but now it looks completely different. And so with that, let's return to our more difficult search. Imagine looking at yourself under the microscope. Do you see? You're probably imagining something like this. In our society, the default is to look at ourselves on the level of the individual. Of the individual, but we couldn't find what we were looking for. So, what if we changed magnification levels too? First, what if we zoomed in? So, one day I was on one, one of my very slow walks when I slipped and almost fell down a set of mossy stairs. Luckily, I did one of those little twists in the air and managed to land back on my feet. Back when I ran, this moment would have seemed so insignificant. I would probably already be thinking about the pace I was going at and the pace I wanted to go at, what I had done that day and what I still had to do. But in that 
that moment, I caught a sudden glimpse of myself at a zoomed in cellular level. And on that level, not falling is pretty amazing. I mean, think about it. Trillions of cells coordinate and take action within milliseconds to prevent catastrophe. Walking out of it, I could almost feel the muscles of my diaphragm contracting, red blood cells carrying oxygen to cells throughout the body, and each cell using that oxygen to break down glucose so they can keep going. I know this is not a biology class, but right now, every cell in your body is working so hard to keep you alive. When we look on the level of the individual, we forget just how impressive and amazing it is to be alive. So who are you? You are, and you always will be, a community of thriving selves. And now, zoom out. Zoom out and out until you're one small dot. When we look on the level of the individual, it's easy to think that you're alone. So I challenge you to zoom out. And as you zoom out, look at the dots that surround you. Friends, family, counselors, teachers, people that you can reach out to. In the days when I felt most lost, I remember talking to my friend from the other side of the world. Even though we were physically so far apart, I felt so close to her. And as you rediscover yourself on the zoomed out level, give back. Start by telling your story. I'll always remember this one conversation I had with a former middle school classmate. She asked me what the most annoying thing was in my life at the moment, and I told her. I told her that I lost my period, and she just stared at me. At first, I thought she was probably just taken aback by how straightforward I was. But then, she told me that she had faced the same problems for a few months now, but she was too embarrassed to tell anyone. That conversation motivates me to tell my story today. So, who are you? You are and you always will be part of a community. One day, about a month after being diagnosed with amenorrhea, I finally got my period back. In that moment, I was just filled with gratitude for the trillions of cells that insist on surviving for the support I received and the support I was able to give. And for this, losing and finding my period. Because it was in this search that I began to question who I thought I was. And it was in this search that I realized, just like how Samada, how, just like how the slide did have Samada, you can rediscover yourself. You might just have to switch to a different magnification level. Thank you.